What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. We have a few Cathedral Port LS cam kits to do for this one. Uh, and I'm excited about these and both of these cam kits will be getting the 1212, which is the same cam we just put in my WK Statesman. It is my new favorite Cathedral Port cam. So with a few different combos, I'm excited to see some results. I'm excited to show you guys some results. We'll get some more data on this cam in different scenarios and different combos and different cars and just basically see how we go. So uh, for those of you who missed it, we put this 1212 in my WK Statesman with some stock port 799 heads. For those of you who are playing at home, those are uh, the same as 243 heads. We get them from the States. They came on the 5.3 performance engines. Um, and yeah, they're the same casting as a 243, just obviously a 799 instead. Uh, so they're a lot better than a 241. Um, well, a fair bit better than a 241. So my Statesman went 404 horsepower, 4, 404 wheel horsepower with the 1212 standard port 799s and the rest of our general upgrades that we always do. Uh, 3000 stall converter, which we just had in the container, uh, VCM OTR and uh, inch and seven eighths four into one primaries from Black Ops Performance with a twin three inch cat back or twin three inch system from their back uh, from Black Ops Performance as well. Uh, so this one, we got this lovely VZ, another blue one. Um, so 5.7 VZ, it is getting uh, C and C ported 241s. So the, uh, theoretically this should perform even better than the, the 799s or 243s should, being CNC ported. We're still waiting for the heads to get back, but we're gonna do our pre-runs on this thing at the moment, get this engine pulled out, have it ready basically for when the heads get back. But I'm not gonna film heaps of the actual cam kit. Same as um, the last video I did with all the rectangle port cam kits. You've seen it all on this channel a million times. I'm not gonna keep regurgitating the same content, but the important thing is different cams, different setups, different results. Get some data for you guys so that you all know. Uh, so this one, not sure exactly what these pipes are. Um, they definitely look like inch and three quarter. They're not inch and seven eight. Uh, they appear to be four into ones of some kind. We will see for sure once we get it on the dyno, uh, on the hoist, sorry. Uh, it's got a OTR. Looks like it might be a VCM steel one. Uh, it's not a plastic one though. I don't think that is gonna matter too much. I don't think that's gonna change too much. And as we found, as we found with my Statesman, even with the stock port 799s, the next restriction became the standard LS1 throttle body. Uh, so the, we're excited to get the Statesman back on the dyno. I might even put that in this video, actually. I've got another throttle body there for it. We want to do some testing with some throttle bodies, different throttle bodies, different intakes, and see how we go. Um, so we want to test. Obviously, we know what the standard LS1 intake and throttle body is doing, or LS6 style intake. Uh, we've got a four bolt throttle body, 92 mil throttle body with an adapter. So I'll adapt it to that manifold, see how it does then. And then we've also got an LS2 four bolt cathedral port manifold in the container. So after we've tried the LS6 manifold with the 92 mil throttle body, we'll swap over to the LS2 manifold with the 92 mil throttle body and see what difference all of that makes. So we might even put that in this video. I might make a separate video, I don't know yet, but we can't do that testing with this car, unfortunately, because it is VZ, it is fly by wire. So we are limited by this throttle body, but uh, I'm interested to see what difference it makes with the CNC port of 241s versus 799s. And overall, I'm just excited to be putting this cam in a few more cars because it's freaking wicked. Really excited about it. So um, that's this one. The next one is a Monaro, um, which we're doing pretty much the exact same combo as my WK. Gonna get some 799s for that. A few interesting comparisons to be made. So anyway, we'll get our pre-runs on this, see what we're dealing with at the moment. Obviously it's mapless and all the rest, so it must have a tune on it of some kind. Um, and then we'll get into it. So we're not changing the exhaust or anything on this, like that OTR, that exhaust, that's all staying the same. It's just uh, cam kit, CNC ported heads, new converter, uh, a trans cooler, like we always put on them with converters, and uh, you know, just the rest of what comes with a uh, one of our cam kits from OSP Warehouse. So, yeehaw, let's get it done. Rightio, boys and girls. This is what we're starting off with. 318-ish. Horsepower at the wheels. 
to start with before we do work our magic. Here you are. Let's see how she go. Wasp man, wasp man. Oh, I fucking hate him. I hate him so much. <laughs> Righto, so we've got both starting to pull this thing down. We did do a leak down test just to ensure that the bit of smoke that this thing was blowing on the dyno wasn't a ring issue, but leak down test came back awesome. So basically the consensus is that the oil must be coming from valve stem seals or it might be something as simple as just as an issue with the PCV system. So uh, it could be something that simple, but either way, time for this thing to get pulled down and start getting ready for our OSP cam kit. Another one for Bow, eh? Another one. <laughs> Are you doing them in your sleep yet or what? You dreaming about them? All day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, degreeing in the big 1212 for the big girl. We installed height checks on our beautiful CNC 241s back from Next Gen Engineering. Oh. As usual and as expected, we are going to have to shim the spring seats up a bit just to get to the right installed height because uh, our installed heights at the moment are just a bit too big. Alright, 67cc's, here you are. Righto guys, Bo's smack along with this. We got the engine back in the car yesterday. We are still waiting on the correct length push rods. So we didn't have the length push rods that we needed for this particular combo in stock. So I got an airbag some last week, which is right before Easter. I was hoping they'd be here yesterday, but they're still not here. So we still got to do push rods and rocker gear, but we figured in the meantime, start getting it in the car. Uh, so it's got our new red diamond converter in it. It's got our new PWR trans cooler in as well, Bo smashed all that through, so this has basically been probably the first one that Bo's basically done from start to finish, did everything. <laughs> Degreed the cam, did the install high stall himself, everything. How's it feel, mate? Pretty good. Your, little, good. your little baby. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully she makes a nice big hunk of chunk of power, looking forward to that. But anyway, hopefully get this on the dyno tomorrow, just hopefully those push rods are here today so that we can get this thing sorted and running. And on the dyno, yeehaw. So this one, just like all the others guys, ARP flywheel, oh, flex plate bolts, ARP uh, converter bolts, um, all, the, all the regular stuff, all the berries. All the goodness. So uh, yeah, sorry guys, I'm trying not to do it in the last video where I said that I wasn't gonna film too much in depth of what we were doing and just film the, what was happening and the results. And that video ended up being nearly an hour long because I filmed a lot of what was going on, so. These cam kits are all getting the same stuff they always get, all the same treatment we always give them, all the best gear. Ah uh, yeah, smash them through and get some results. So just have a little issue with the thermostat and this thing, it's doing some funny stuff. Temperature's not staying consistent, it's coming up and down, up and down, it's it's not very happy. So just pull the thermostat out, just gonna do some checks, might just chuck a new one in it just to be done with it. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, this thing's ready to hit the dyno. Sounds awesome. Excited, excited to see how it goes. Radio, boys and girls, results are in. Interesting again, always interesting results. So, we ended up 404.6, which I think is just a tad bit more than the Stato made. Um, like point, point 0.2 horsepower more, I think. Uh, so yeah, interesting 
that we didn't make a heap more power with the CNC heads. Um, so a few things to consider is the fact that this is only a two and a half inch exhaust, it's not a dual three inch, which I didn't think would make any difference at this sort of power level. I didn't really think that it would make much difference at all. Slightly different headers as well. Um, I don't think these are inch and seven eighths, but inch and seven eighths. Once again, I honestly thought that potentially the slightly smaller headers would actually keep velocity up a bit higher and actually maybe help uh, do a bit better. But also a different OTR, there's a few differences. Uh, the other thing is, Rex was saying that this thing is taking a lot more timing than the Statesman did. Uh, and the other thing is this being CNC chambered two for ones, they are a bigger chamber. It's lower compression than the Statesman was being uh, the untouched chambers on the 799s that were also skimmed about as much off the deck. So um, yeah, Stato was a bit higher compression, uh, but yeah, um, regardless, uh, obviously we know that at this sort of power level, the throttle body and stuff is what really starts to become the restriction. So, um, you know, I don't think we're really leaving much on the table. It's just that it is interesting that it didn't make uh, a heat more power, but this, um, we'd really- This one didn't have that uh, restriction issue. Oh yeah. But don't quote me, but I think the Visa drive-by-wire throttle body could be slightly larger slightly than bigger. The, the standard LSKR Gen 3 cable. Yep. Um, so I suppose to compare this, what we'd really have to do is actually bring up the Stato graph and overlay them to see whether the CNC heads are actually giving it, uh, you know, a bit more mid-range. But um, we're gonna go, it's late at the moment. So uh, on Monday, we'll bring up the other dyno sheets and actually overlay them and do some more comparison. But regardless, still stock bottom, 5.7, aspirated, 400 plus horsepower in an auto. Still a freaking awesome result. You know, that's that's still <laughs> that's still huge. Uh, you know, apart from the Stato, that's, well, even, it's still made more than the Stato. So still the most power we've made out of an aspirated auto LS1 um, stock bottom end to date. Uh, and yeah, wicked result. So awesome little combo. Sounds tough as nails. Wicked little you. So anyway, we'll do some more analyzing when we get back on Monday. Right, oh guys, so we got here this morning and I was gonna bring up the Stato graph and compare these two and do some proper analysis of what is going on here. And uh, lo and behold, finally, our dyno computer that has been on life support for all this time, we have ridden it out for as long as we possibly could, put it off for as long as we could, but it's carked it. I think the MOBO is completely fried. Um, powering up, but just not doing anything. So uh, yeah, finally started sorting out the dyno cabinet. Got a new computer in here that we built um, to take over from old trusty. Just, uh, we had it sitting there ready on standby, but uh, we got to pay to upgrade all our dyno software to run on a 64-bit uh, system. So we were just putting off that for as long as possible to not have to pay to upgrade our software, but obviously the time has come. The gauntlet has dropped. Old trusty's cooked. So anyway, it's a nice rack-mounted case. So I'm gonna keep the case for a later date. It'd be a really good case to make a, a server out of for later on when we actually have a, a data cabinet. But for now, get this sorted uh, on Monday. We'll call up Dino Dynamics. Still got RGB. <laughs> Still got some RGB RAM in there, which we've got to swap out. But uh, anyway, I can do that at a later date. But yeah, we'll call Dino Dynamics on Monday, get our software sorted and finally, finally upgrade to our new computer. But the graph should be on the solid state drive that we've got on this computer. So once we get all the software changed over and upgraded and stuff and running on this computer, I should still be able to bring up both graphs because they should still both be on that hard drive. Fingers crossed. So we'll sort that out then. In the meantime, Rex has just taken the to do all of the, just the drivability tuning, aisle tuning, coming to a stop, gearbox tune, etc. So it'll be ready to get picked up. All right guys, so after a very, very, very long three odd weeks, we finally have the dyno back online on the new computer, on new software, how exciting. What a time it was, what a time it's been anyway. Means I can finally bring up this graph and finally sign off this video. So the blue here is the Stato and the red is the VZ Ute. So we're 0.1 horsepower different at peak. Uh, but as you can see, the Ute is making a lot more down low. And that is what I believe is due to that port. Uh, like I was saying, like even, even though the peak horsepower is not there and the difference that CNC port, I think, is really helping down the low, which it looks like it is. Now, the Sato did make a lot more torque, noticeably. Uh, this difference, I would say, obviously, is, is mostly due to converted differences. Um, that one we put in the Sato was a fair bit bigger uh, than the one we put in the Ute. Um, I'm not actually sure what it is, what it was, I should say. 
Uh, but it was, uh, the one we put in the ute was only 2800, and the one we put in the Statesman, um, it would stall up to about 3,000, 3,200. 3, so, um, somewhere around there. So, quite a bit bigger converter, which I think is the torque difference. There's probably a few other differences in there, in, just in the drivetrain that could be affecting it as well. There's, there's, there's quite a few differences in the compression as well, uh, like we talked about already. But yeah, interestingly, very, very similar otherwise. Um, but yeah, that's the difference. That's how we ended up. And, uh, now I can finally sign off this video. So thanks for watching as always, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you. Bye.